In the end, not a single customer stopped by that day. Maybe we should do something about it. No, we definitely need to fix it! Meanwhile, I dished out the salad for tonight's dinner. When I told Gretel I wanted to cook for everyone, he said to me, Salad does not count as cooking. Oh, no, that's not what he said. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I got that flashback. And that was that. Permission granted! I still needed to check in with Cinderella, as well as the other Alice, who supposedly lived next door to me, but I hadn't seen either of them all day. In fact, I hadn't seen Alice ever. I had been hoping to introduce myself, but no matter how many times I knocked on the door, no one ever answered. Okay, at that point, I'm convinced he remembers everything and is like, oh, please, if I just am really quiet, maybe she'll go away. <laughs> at this point, I wasn't even sure anyone was actually in there. There! All done! With dinner now ready, I went to fetch Gretel. Here you are! Bon appetit! When he arrived at the dinner table, he murmured in surprise. Wow. I wasn't expecting something so fancy. You must be talented. I don't know about talented. I just like to cook, that's all. The table was lined with sandwiches, salad, and a big pot of stew. Okay, you made some stew. That will technically count as cooking. If you can make stew from scratch, I'd say that makes you talented. Then maybe I should enter a talent show! <laughs> I knew he'd only said it to be polite, but it still felt nice to hear. As I was grinning to myself, I realized he was giving me a dismal look. What? I tilted my head curiously, inviting him to speak his mind. You're like a little slave, aren't you? It was so sudden, and so very rude. You think so? I smiled back at him. Obviously. Most people wouldn't cook and clean for strangers for free. But slaves only do it because they have to. I'm doing it because I want to. But why bother? Who stands to gain from that? Well, I'm essentially doing it for my own benefit, but it indirectly benefits the rest of you too. I guess I do chores for the same reasons you bake. It's fun, and I'm good at it. I winked. <laughs> Gretel raised his eyebrows and smiled. W she winked at me. You don't pull any punches, do you? Nope. And neither do you. Now eat up before it gets cold. Gladly. Thank you very much. At last, he began to eat my cooking. Cinderella's little brothers sure are a handful. Girl, all the guys in this game are a handful. Say, do you know if Alice is around? He should be. I doubt he's left his room. Great, I should tell him dinner's ready. Oh, I wouldn't bother if I were you. Why's that? At my question, Gretel tilted his head in a show of contemplation. If you're curious, why not go see him for yourself? It was, by all means, the obvious solution. I don't think he'll answer the door. I've tried a few times now. I think he's ignoring me. Oh, there's a trick to it. Gretel curled his lips in a sinister grin. Uh-oh. You just break in. Well, here I go again. Um, hello? Alice? Are you there? I knocked on the door. No response. So I tried calling for him again. Uh, why did this suddenly just hit me out of nowhere? Am I crazy or do the doors kind of look like chocolate bars? Am I crazy? I know it's just like a brown door, but something about like the shape of it just reminds me of a chocolate bar. Now I want chocolate. Drat. Hello? Alice? It's me, Alice, from next door. After a long pause, I slumped my shoulders in defeat. He won't answer. This was no different from my previous attempts. No matter how many times I knocked or called his name, the person in the room never answered. <sighs> I took a deep breath. <laughs> this is the trick? All right. Alice! You freeloading scum! Pay your rent, you deadweight loser! And 
and screamed insults at a total stranger at the top of my lungs. According to Gretel, this was the trick to get Alice to show himself. A moment later, the lock clicked and the door swung open, very sedately. I straightened my posture and donned a smile. Time to meet this infamous Alice! Hi there! As of last night, I'm your new... <laughs> you still look exactly the same. Great. <laughs> Do you remember who I am? Quick, before you shut the door. Shut the hell up already! God! Maybe some of us want to spend our lives sleeping, but no! You come storming up here pounding on my door, howling insults. Some great hobby you have. Have you considered getting a life? If you knock on my door and I don't answer, that's a pretty good indication that I don't want to answer, don't you think? Even the mailman has enough common decency to leave the package at the door and go away! So hi, I'm your next door neighbor. Out walked a guy with blonde hair and blue eyes and a bad attitude. Oh right, you're a guy. <laughs> I already knew this, but somehow it still came as a surprise. In fact, I scarcely even noticed his little tirade. <laughs> He'll be so disappointed by that. Thank you for the pointless observation. Newsflash! As you can plainly see, I am a man. A alpha gamer man. Or what? Do I look like some kind of animal to you? Are you that deranged? Because if so, I can assure you, I am very much of the male variety. And also, before you start shrieking, Hey, I'm like a doll! Or some other brainless harpy drivel, just quit while you're ahead. The only guys who like to hear that shit are weirdo cross-dressers. Dang, you didn't have to go after the cross-dressers like that. I'm pretty sure Alice is a girl's name, though. So what? You're gonna judge me based solely on my name. You've given up on critical thinking. How stupid are you? There's always dumbass parents out there itching to give their kids dumbass names. <laughs> oh, dang! You, you really went after Northwest like that, too? Wow. This game doesn't pull punches. Northwest. Blue Ivy Carter. Apple Martin. Royalty Brown. Tomorrow. The list goes on and on. Uh. Not to mention, there are plenty of unisex names out there as well. Alex, Jordan, Rowan, Dakota, Casey, Taylor, Sydney, Robin. So yeah, in this age of apples and norths, I'd say there's absolutely nothing strange about a guy named Alice. You're equating Alice to Apple? <sighs> Out of nowhere, he pinched my cheek. Take a hint already! Or are you doing this on purpose? You're the one who said it! I rubbed my cheek, pouting. You're totally doing this on purpose. Ow, 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 ow! This time he pinched my other cheek. <sighs> I can't, I can't handle you. <laughs> you guys have too much energy for me. So what do you want? It had better be of the utmost importance if you saw fit to interrupt my peaceful slumber. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep massaging your cheeks. That could be taken out of context. I clapped both hands over my cheeks defensively. I just wanted to let you know dinner was ready. Well, golly gee, how very kind of you. Oh, but what a shame! If only you were working at a bed and breakfast or something, you would have known better, and I could have been eating your cooking without complaint. You're here to tell me dinner's ready. Out of the blue. Are you brain dead? Is that it? You think you can just show up unannounced and say, Hey, I made dinner! And I'm gonna say, Gee, thanks. I had no way of knowing what you were planning. What if I'd already ordered takeout? What if I'd caved to my hunger and bought discount gas station food? Would you reimburse me for the money I wasted? 
Would you eat my portion on my behalf? I don't think so. Any bed and breakfast worth its salt would let you know about dinner ahead of time. Look, I knocked on your door multiple times. Your excuses sicken me. Sorry. I slumped my shoulders. Well, whatever. It's hardly worth firing a novice maidservant over a minor error. So, what's for dinner? I love- this- this guy just loves to deal in what-if scenarios, and he doesn't- none of it actually happens. Like, he hasn't eaten. He hasn't done any of this stuff. And he's gonna complain? Really? It's free food! Free food that you did not have to cook. Eat it. Or stuff it in you. Cream stew. Hmm. How very dull and unadventurous. But I suppose it would be foolish to expect restaurant-level extravagance from someone of your caliber. Well, then you run along back to the kitchen, plate out my portion, and bring it back here. And for the record, this ain't America, so don't expect me to tip you. Where are we? What is ha I don't understand this planet we're, we're on. Like, it's modern, but... Not. <sighs> Are we? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I think I think my brain just went <laughs> trying to reconcile everything. All right. Well, uh, yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. Uh, what? Okay, you want me to bring it to you? I can do that. Be right back. Make it snappy. One, two, three. And so on his count, I raced down the stairs to the kitchen. Hi there, Alice. How did it go with him? He's so weird. Right? <laughs> yes, yes he is. 343, 344, 345, 346, 347, 348. Huh? Huh? I'm back! Gasping for breath, I held out the tray carrying his dinner. You're late! It took you over 348 seconds! I nearly fell asleep waiting for you! I mean, it took her like six minutes to do it. Okay. Yes, technically you're right. It was five minutes. It wasn't quite six minutes. I think five minutes is pretty quick, personally. It wasn't five minutes. It was five minutes and 48 seconds. That's closer to six minutes. I hate that I was on the same vein as you for once. I mean, I could bring it to you faster if you don't mind it spilling everywhere. You idiot. Obviously, I wouldn't accept spilled stew. Presentation is a crucial part of cooking. And cold stew doesn't count as food. Right. Very well. While you proved to be far more incompetent than I imagined, at the very least you didn't commit the mortal sin of pairing stew with white rice. Rejoice, peasant! Enjoy your beloved Sundari content! <laughs> What are you? Where am I? What is? I... I don't understand. How are you self-aware of like what you are? And why are you leaning so heavily into it? I don't. I'm so dizzy. Uh... <laughs> I need. I need to. Rec... I need to. I need to recenter myself. <sighs> I'm a professional. I can get through this. Um, thank you? You'd have to be out of your mind to pair rice with something as sweet as cream stew. To me, bread is the only option. I will choose bread every time. Or none in the case of curry. I like rice with curry myself. I like both. Then our opinions can never be reconciled. Just as I thought. 
We are fated never to understand one another so long as we live. Now I bid you farewell, rice lover! And so Alice snatched the tray from my hands and slammed the door in my face. What? A moment later, the door opened again. Also, if you're planning to make this a recurring thing, then I expect you to leave it outside my room at the same time each day. I don't want to have to interact with you every mealtime. And for the record, I wake up at 10 a.m. every morning. Don't forget it. What? This time he closed the door for good and locked it. I mean, I'm not upset. Not really. I'm kind of glad to not interact with him every mealtime. I don't think I could handle it. Welcome back. You really got him started, didn't you? I could hear the carnage from here. He's very... interesting, isn't he? I choose my words carefully as I spoke. I... I think you didn't have to. So to you, weird equals interesting. You're so sweet. Personally, I would have used a more fitting adjective, like distasteful. I have to agree with the Gretelmeister on this. I felt his statement was crossing the line, but smiled awkwardly nonetheless. Is he always like that? Always. He's quite the sarcastic little contrarian. No matter what you say to him, he'll launch into a rant at the drop of a hat. Oh goody, I'm glad he's consistent. Sounds entertaining, to say the least. Then you're braver than I am. And crazier. Gretel grinned. How long has he lived here, anyway? Beats me. Feels like I blinked and he was just... there. So you don't know that much about him? Even though he's a tenant in your house? Cinderella owns this house, not me. He says jump and we say how high. Thus, I know next to nothing about that other Alice, nor am I particularly interested. I see. Perhaps it was in fact Cinderella who was the weirdest person in the family. Anyway, you're the one who decided to kick the hornet's nest, so it's your responsibility to look after him. Ah, another one of these, eh? Makassare mashta. Thank you for dinner. It was scrumptious. Gretel got to his feet, leaving his empty plate on the table. You're very welcome. Oh yeah, do you have any favorite dishes in particular? Will you make them for me? If I can, sure. In that case, I'd love anything sweet. Sugar is good for the brain, as they say. Anything sweet. Okay, I'll think of something. I shall keep my expectations tempered. Is that your way of saying my stew wasn't good? After Gretel left, I patiently waited for Cinderella to come home before I ate. Hours ticked by until dinner time had long since passed. He sure is out late tonight. My stomach rumbled for the umpteenth time. Mm. I clutched my abdomen. <sighs> I glanced over at the stove and debated reheating the stew now that it was almost certainly ice cold. No, I should wait for Cinderella. I shook my head, fighting the urge to sate my own needs. All this time, I waited specifically so I could have dinner with Cinderella. If I ate without him, it would mean this hours-long investment was all in vain. I can understand that. She's like, but I've, I've lasted this long to break now. Be a waste. As I wrestled with myself. <laughs> in walked the man himself. Welcome home, Cinderella. Would you like dinner? I ran over to him with a smile. Oh, you look different. Nah, I already ate. Listen, I was wondering, would you mind if I cooked and cleaned for everyone? Sure, knock yourself out. Want me to raise your salary? Oh, no, I don't need... more money. But before I could even finish my sentence, he left the room without a second glance. He seems a bit out of sorts. 
What am I going to do with the rest of the stew? As I mumbled sadly to myself, my stomach squeaked at me. Well, I can eat it. It was kind of cute, actually. <laughs> Said no one about the noises their stomach makes, ever. Us sad girls still gotta eat. Heck yeah, we do. Hungry sad girls unite. Late that night. Ugh, I shouldn't have had that early supper. Now I'm hungry again. Is there anything edible in this house? Just some cold stew. Oh, nice. There's a lot. Give me some of the salami. Wait, what's with the pot? What's in here? Stew? That reminds me, that chick said she made dinner or something. She put the whole damn pot in the fridge? Hmm. hmm. Not bad at all. She can make tea and stew. She's a keeper. Wonder what happened to our servant boy. What's he up to? <sighs> oh, good morning, Cinderella. Good morning, dear brother. Morning. Cinderella walked in right as I was preparing breakfast. He looked grumpy. Maybe he wasn't a morning person. I figured he'd walk out again, but instead he plopped himself down in a chair and stared at me. What's up? I looked back at him curiously. Hurry up. With what? My food. He tapped his fingers on the table. Dang. Then he glanced pointedly at Gretel's plate. This could only mean one thing. You want me to cook for you? No shit. That's why I sat down. Oh, okay. Coming right up. And so I launch into cooking at the speed of light. Nyeom. A few minutes later, I plated a very fluffy omelette along with a salami and cheese croissant sandwich. Oh, that sounds good. To keep things healthy and add a splash of color, I dished him some fruit along with it. Hmm. I like the way you think. I had a feeling this would suit your preferences. Oh, but if you'd rather have Japanese food, I can make you some fried fish and miso soup instead. Currently, I was heating up some French onion soup to go along with it. And eat like a poor person. No thank you. The croissant sandwich he was eating was actually cheaper than what I suggested, but I decided to keep that to myself. What about you? Oh, I'll just eat the leftover stew from last night. Uh-huh. <laughs> I ate it all. Cinderella munched on his croissant sandwich, sounding altogether disinterested. I watched him for a moment. Then I decided to ask him something that had been on my mind. You know, it's funny. Last night I could have sworn there was a ton of stew left over, but come this morning I found there was only enough for one more serving. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Instantly he froze. You caught him. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's your mind playing tricks on you. Or maybe a fairy did it. Oh, of course! A fairy! He probably snuck in while I was sleeping and helped himself. I clapped my hands together. Uh-huh. He gave a non-committal grunt. Interesting. Must have been a really big fairy. By the way, Cinderella, I saw you heading into the kitchen last night. What was that about? <sighs> As Gretel cut in, Cinderella fell silent. You respond to a silence by... Ooh. Do I tease or stay quiet? Hmm... Okay, we got our Narcissus boy. We are... He doesn't get respect from anybody. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we should stay quiet and not join in with the teasing. We kind of were already teasing him. 
But maybe, maybe he needs somebody in his corner. Let's try staying quiet. <laughs> I decided not to comment. What's so funny? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Annoyed, Cinderella averted his gaze. At this rate, he was likely to storm off somewhere. Okay, I gotta go take some up to Alice's room. Once you've eaten, I'll make you something to drink. I hastily took the hint and made myself scarce. Safe travels up there. Thank you, I need it. Good morning, Alice! I called out to him from the other side of the door, but he didn't respond. Granted, it was quite possible he was still asleep. Why? Because it was 9am, and he had told me he woke up every morning at 10. Now, you might be wondering, why not arrive at 10am like he asked? And the answer is quite simple. 10am was when the cafe opened for business. <laughs> and not because you wanted to get back at him just a little bit. For being a Sundari. Breakfast is ready! I'll leave it here for you! Unwilling to waste any more time, I dragged my bedside table out into the hall and set the tray onto it. Aww. That's nice of you. When I returned to the kitchen, Gretel was rinsing his dirty dishes off in the sink. Oh, I can take care of that. This is the least I can do after you cooked. Well, okay. Guess I'll take you up on that. Thanks, I appreciate it. Oh, he's still here. I wondered if he had left. I glanced over at Cinderella to find him nearly done with his own breakfast. In that case, I'll make us a little something to drink. How about some coffee? We also have black tea and green tea. I'm fine with coffee. Espresso or cafe au lait? I guess. I'll take a cafe au lait. What about you, Gretel? Cafe au lait for me as well. Pinching the hem of my dress, I curtsied gracefully. Ooh. Kashko marimashita. <laughs> Humming to myself, I clicked the switch on the siphon coffee maker. Once the water began to boil, the steam rose to the top, mixing with the coffee grounds to begin the brewing process. Perfect! While I waited for the coffee to brew, I bustled around the dining area to get the milk and utensils ready. Hey, Gretel. What is it? Is this a cafe? Why, yes, it is. The next thing I knew, Cinderella and Gretel were suddenly standing behind me. You know how to use a siphon coffee maker. Yep. This is actually my favorite way to make coffee. It's fun to watch the steam rise to the top, you know? Kind of like magic. And when it's all done, it smells amazing. Huh. I wouldn't know. I hardly use the thing. Then what's the point of having one? I just bought it for decoration. Gotta have the right ambiance, you know? So it's both functional and aesthetic! That's so smart! But Cinderella didn't return my smile. <laughs> what? Are you being sarcastic, or are you just a ditz? Uh... I guess I'm a ditz, then. I put my index finger to my chin and tilted my head in a cutesy display. Girl. If you know you're ditzy, then it doesn't count. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. But I'm not being sarcastic, honest. You better not be. Oh, the coffee's nearly ready now. Go on and have a seat over there. At my suggestion, Cinderella fell silent and sat down. Cinderella, you know you don't stand a chance against a crafty little fox like her. Take your eyes off her for one second and she'll have you wrapped around her little finger. Like hell she will! Thanks, Gretel. Getting him interested in me now, thank you. Twenty minutes later. There you go! I set two cups of coffee on the counter. Smells great. You can say that again. I poured a cup for myself and joined them at the counter. So, what's your name, anyway? Huh? It was quite possibly the world's most belated question. Gretel's like, really, dude? 
You didn't think to ask her that before you hired her? It's her fault for not introducing herself. I wanted to tell him you didn't let me introduce myself, but I held my tongue. I'm... Alice. Alice what? Huh? Oh, m my last name? Caught off guard, I couldn't help but stammer. Well, it's... Oh god, what do I do now? I knew I needed to give him something, anything, but nothing sprang to mind. As I hesitated. Never mind. I don't really care. He shrugged. It was a rather sudden about face, considering he was the one who asked in the first place. I feel like that's a bit of a problematic statement coming from her boss. Not like we signed any paperwork. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Good thing you're not a cop. Oh, for Christ's sake. Keep pushing your luck, and eventually it'll come back to bite you. It's bad enough enduring the shame of being associated with your infamy. I refuse to be related to a criminal. Don't worry, Gretel. If they try to arrest him, I'll just say I'm a tenant doing chores. I gave him a thumbs up. Okay, perfect. You do that. Gretel extended his hand, and I shook it. We have an accord. And so the pact... A perjury was sealed. <laughs> hey, quit assuming I'm gonna get arrested. We're just joking around, right, Gretel? Oh, I'm dead serious. His smile didn't reach his eyes. He's fine. <laughs> Cinderella took a big, awkward sip of his coffee. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Cinderella, I wanted to talk to you about the cafe. The cafe? Oh, right. How did it go yesterday? We didn't get a single customer. Well, no surprise there. Another day in the red. <sighs> oh, well. So what about it? I think we need to fix this. Yeah, probably. Is that all you wanted to say, or... What? I blinked at him. Look, you're trying to run a business, right? Don't you think you need to start bringing in some customers? Nah, it doesn't matter. Customers or no customers, it makes no difference. And having no customers means I get to take it easy. Then why did you hire me? Good question. I guess I just felt like it. Yeah, if I had to say, it was probably just a whim. The thing about us rich folks is, unlike you poors, we can afford to be generous. Oh, I get it. I didn't get it, actually, but I nodded anyway. If he hired a total stranger purely on a whim, then I was right. He was by far the weirdest person in this family. Besides, with or without customers, the property value on this place is on the rise. Worst case scenario, I can just sell the whole thing and probably make a killing. You'd sell off your own cafe? Yeah, once the price starts to plateau. Oh, but I guess then you wouldn't have anywhere to live. Oh well, life's not fair. Don't blame me, blame your low-class parents. R right I couldn't think of anything more pertinent to say. Instead, I wondered absently how he would react if he found out I was his fairly wealthy prospective fiancé. Besides... No customers means nobody buys anything, and that means no overhead expenses from restocking. No big deal. Then why call this a cafe at all? I don't know. To me, it just feels like I bought a house, and now I'm living in it. Does it really matter? I guess not. So then why even try to keep the cafe open in the first place? Well, when I first bought the property, I was originally planning to flip it. But then I decided I felt like running a cafe, so it was like a free bonus. Imagine being me, the town celebrity and having all the money in the world. To me, it's like charity work or something. Then again... You're a great cook, so... Hmm... Maybe you're onto something here. Just then he turned to look at me. Yes? 
Say, do you like to learn? Um... Yes? Oh yes, absolutely! I raise my hand in a pick-me gesture. This girl, I love learning! Me, right here! Personally, I love all things fun, fresh, and interesting. Hence, I'm always looking for new things to learn. So, you're the curious type, I take it. My image of Cinderella continued to shift, from an upper-class snob to a good Samaritan to an inquisitive oddball. Alright, it's settled! Suddenly, he slapped his thigh. Starting today, we're going to make this cafe the best restaurant in all the land! What? Where the hell did that come from? Hey, Alice! Yes? I straightened my posture. We'll do whatever you want. You can beef up the menu or change things however you see fit and I'll foot the bill. In exchange, you turn this place around until we're printing enough money to make even me feel faint. Uh, okay. Hmm, interesting. We decided to fetch Snow White and give him an overview of our new goal. You're going to manage the cafe. Yep! And you're wondering if I have any ideas. Yep! Well, I don't. The end. He turned on his heel, but I quickly grabbed him by the arm. Wait! Please don't go! He reluctantly turned back, a scowl plastered on his face. Come on, Snow. Not like you got anything better to do. Help out for once. Even if I did, I wouldn't be of any use to anyone. That's not true. You know what they say. Two heads are better than one. You've got two other heads right over there. He was referring to his brothers, of course. You may as well give up now, Snow White. You know a certain someone always gets his way around here. Gretel jerked his thumb at Cinderella. <sighs> Snow White's scowl deepened, and Cinderella cleared his throat awkwardly. <clears throat> Look, people. Who runs this place? Why, my dear brother Cinderella, of course. And who graciously lets you live here? You do. That's right. So, my sweet little brothers, do we understand who's in charge around here? Finally, Snow White plopped down into a chair as though he'd resigned himself for the worst. In contrast with Cinderella's smile, the younger guys both looked disgruntled. Sorry for dragging you into this. <laughs> Don't worry. Not like I hate your guts or anything. Oh, he's pissed all right. <laughs> I'm gonna end up dead. Whatever. Let's just get on with the meeting and figure this out. He steepled his fingers together. The topic of the day is how to bring in more customers. Now then, let's go around the room clockwise, starting with Alice. My heart skipped a beat in surprise. Me? Oh, okay. Let's see, um... Um, I think this is a fairly easy choice. Everyone's always asking Cinderella for stuff. We're our own woman, independent and stuff. Personally, I think maybe this place is a bit too intimidating for the average customer. So, you're saying customers are too scared to come in? Exactly. I mean, there's no sign out front, there's hardly a menu. Most people probably don't even realize this is a cafe at all. It was a pretty valid point, considering I was essentially flying by the seat of my pants here. What? I seem to recall having a sign. Cinderella squinted at me dubiously. Well, if you did, it's not there now. I squinted back. I knew I wasn't misremembering things. After all, the lack of signage had caught my attention the very first night I arrived. That can't be right. Hey, Gretel, what happened to the damn sign? Beats me. Okay, then, what about you, Snow? 
Snow White looked at him blankly. You took it down a while back and handed it off to me, remember? Oh, that's right. I wanted to get that ugly thing out of the way before the party. What did you do with it? Threw it away. You did what? Just kidding. It's in storage. Well, put it back outside. What else are we going to use it for? He had a point. Meanwhile, I was starting to understand exactly how a stylish cafe in the heart of downtown came to have zero customers. Well, that's one problem solved. Anything else? Ooh, pick me! I raised my hand. Yes, Alice. You've had at least one or two customers since the cafe's been open, right? So why haven't they been back? Good question. We did get a few customers back when we first opened. So what made them stop coming? How should I know? Gretel shrugged his shoulders. What do you mean? It's literally your job to know these things. Snow White was in charge of the dining area, not me. Naturally, everyone turned to look at Snow White. I think maybe the customer service was a teensy bit lacking in hospitality? I was just picturing Snow reading a book and never talking to anybody who came in. This was currently our biggest issue, and I made sure to soften my statement as much as possible. Yeah. No matter how good the food is, if the waiter's a jerk, I'd never go back there again, that's for sure. I hope you're listening, Snow. This is your problem. And Cinderella promptly ruined all my effort to be discreet. Cinderella! I lightly pinched his cheek. What? The cornerstone of great customer service is a great smile. I figured you could use some practice. Excuse me? Are you forgetting who I am? Hmm? My bosh? And so he helped me practice right back. Anyway, jokes aside, this means our customer service needs improvement. So your proposed solution would be to smile more. Once again, everyone looked at Snow White. Hey, Snow. Let's see your smile for a sec. Can he? But Snow White turned away. Guess that's a no. Maybe I'll get to see it on his route. Okay, you go first. Smile at him and maybe he'll smile back. Who, me? Sure! I wasn't expecting Cinderella to request me directly. Now to put on my most winning grin and blow them all away. H how's this? I donned my best smile. I'd give it ten points. Uh, I'll give you a generous twelve points myself. This was the part where they were all supposed to blush, but instead they stared back dismally. That's out of fifty points total, right? No. A hundred points total, obviously. Your rating system sucks. Meh. I slumped my shoulders. I tried to make them weak in the knees, and what did I get? A punch in the gut. <laughs> no point in forcing it, I guess. In that case, we'll just let Snow White stay as he is for now. In contrast to their treatment of me, they were more than happy to coddle Snow White. Well, something has to give. Just then it hit me. Oh, I know! Why don't we have Gretel cover the dining area? You're really friendly looking, so I'm sure you'll be a hit with all the girls. I feel like you just snuck an insult in there. Nope. Nah, you're reading too much into it. Ha <laughs> ha. I laughed and waved a hand dismissively. I don't mind working in the dining hall in theory, but then there'll be no one left to cover the kitchen. Oh, right. What about you, Cinderella? Excuse me. Lady, I'm the owner. My job is to open my wallet. Nothing else. 
Plenty of business owners help run their businesses. I wasn't backing down from this one. In that case, we'll have Cinderella join us on our shifts. Any objections? You're damn right I object to this! Why the hell should- No objections here. Sounds good to me! Snow White and I immediately agreed and Gretel soon followed suit. Well, I obviously have no objections. So by a majority vote of three to one, Cinderella will now work with us in the cafe. Yay! Woo! Let's hear it for Cinderella! The three of us applauded, happy to finally be on the same page for once. No, 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 no! Cinderella scowled as I shot him an encouraging thumbs up. Smile, Cinderella! Show us those pearly whites! Or else your grumpy scowl will scare all the customers away! Shut up, ten points! Wow, that really hurts my feelings. Anyway, don't worry, Cinderella. I'll be there to help you every step of the way. <laughs> he turned away, sulking. Evidently, he'd lost the will to fight me on this. Anyone else have anything to say? Constructive criticism preferred. I do. Snow White raised his hand. Whoa, that's rare. Go for it, Snow White. The floor is yours. This conversation is going nowhere. We have no attachment to the business, nor do we thirst for wealth. And we don't need to make a profit to survive, so really it doesn't matter either way. But while that may be true for us, the other cafes are a different story. So what you're saying is... We should be using these other cafes as a reference point? Snow White nodded his assent at my interpretation of his statement. That's a good idea. Like we're rebuilding from the bottom up, so to speak. Learn from the plebs, in other words. Well, that's rude. Who says they're all plebs? What if they're spoiled layabouts like you? Ah, who even cares? <laughs> Damn, girl, go get them. Think of it like a recon mission. Me and Gretel will watch the house so you guys have fun. Uh, you guys? Cinderella and I exchanged a glance. Snow, you trying to set us up? What's going on? Fine, whatever. Let's just go and get it over with. He grabbed my arm and got to his feet. Wait, what? Wh what about the cafe? They just said they'd handle it. Wh what? Hey! Whoa! Slow down! And so Cinderella dragged me off, his two younger brothers waving after us. Come back soon. Or don't. That works too. You guys suck. <laughs>